Hey everybody, my name is Simon. Uh, I go by the moniker IOFlow on the forums. Um, I promised some pretty pictures with the Eden project and I'm finally at a point where I'm ready to try and show some of that work that I've been doing. Basically the idea is that I wanted to implement some sort of tectonic plate type stuff in the world map so that we could place planetary features in a pseudo-scientific, semi-realistic way. So what you can see here is the tectonic plates and it's just a Voronoi sphere and I've got a whole bunch of settings here so I thought I'd just play with some settings and show off what I can do so far with the new stuff I've just added. So those are not very exciting tectonic plates but if I was to vary them up with a bit of noise so we'll turn the strength up on the noise yeah it's a bit more wobbly maybe make it 30 there we go the next thing I'll do is skip down here to the channel debug so have various different settings I can use here to see different combinations of calculations that I've done. So at the moment it's just showing the different tectonic plates. If I switch over to one that's showing me the tectonic plates. I just think of each plate being an island. Actually if I invert that it'll make more sense. So there we go back got a couple of utility things here um, I won't try and explain them because it'll get all weird um, I know what they're in my head because I've just been working on them for the last week but anyway. okay so here's just some generic noise um, at one setting and then here's another set of noise at another setting and then here are those two bits of noises blend together with another set of noise so that to try and have a, a mixture of big continental blocks and little island blocks if I go to debug channel 7 now what it's doing is it's looking at the tectonic plates that ho have over a certain percentage of water and it's saying well that's an oceani oceanic tectonic plate so we're just going to sink any land in that plate what it does is it let us um, have those smooth long coastlines that you see on, on some continents and then what I'll do is I'll jump over to 8 and what it's doing now here is it's looking at it's given each tectonic plate a random direction that it's moving in and now it's calculating what the collision is between those plates and depending on whether it's a continental plate or an oceanic plate and the way that they converge or diverge creates different natural features so you can see mountain ranges here obviously now the nice thing about the system is that it's all procedural so that once I've got a recipe I like I can vary it indefinitely by just coming up to the top here to the seed and saying give me a different random version of this. There we go. Now we can see a slightly different aspect of this. We're seeing a lot of island chains here which is what happens when, check my technical diagram. Island chains happen when you get continental and oceanic plates converging on each other. Or oceanic and oceanic plates. So let's have a look at a few different versions of this particular planet recipe. As you can see, you can get a lot of nice variety. And as well as having a seed for the, what I call the landfall, um, I also have a seed for the tectonic plates so if I want to just do a completely different tectonic plate arrangement so I don't know if it's a thing to have more than one seed but I just wanted to have the ability to randomize those two independently of each other 
you can see we're getting a lot of variation, but it all has the same sort of style and structure and design. And that's what all these other settings for. So what I can do is I could cook up, cook up um, a different combination of settings to make it maybe no ocean, like a desert moon or something, or, or nearly all completely ocean. And I can save that as a different config and then just load it as needed when I go into a certain solar system. Uh, but uh, that's it, I think, at the moment. Um, just switching through different seeds to see the type of variation that you can get, or things that change and things that don't. And if I wanted to, oh, I suppose that's worth mentioning too at the moment, I'm just using a simple uh, color curve like this. And if I wanted to swap it out and sort of say, what would that look like with a different color curve on it? Now I can get myself a, a muddy moon or some sort of desert planet or a, a moon like that. Uh, we've got two planets, so take that back to five. You get all sorts of interesting variation like that. Where did you go, little fellow? Half color curve, landfall color curve, there we go. Cool. Anyway, I just wanted to do a bit of a show off because I half killed my brain figuring this stuff out. There's a lot more that I can do now that I have this data structure in place because I really like a YouTube channel by a guy called Artifexium and he does a lot of videos talking about how you can calculate what sorts of biomes the planet would have depending on where its oceans and its mountain ranges are. He does all sorts of wind currents and ocean currents so I'm hoping now that I've got this set up I can start playing with stuff like that. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. There you go.